What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 10 of Vlogmas. Day 10. Um, I am feeling good with this little challenge and I don't know, what have you. Um, today's video topic is not related to Christmas at all, but I feel that it's a very important topic for my channel and for today because a lot of people in the fitness industry, especially a lot of women, I get a lot of questions about competing and a lot of people see the pictures on Instagram and Facebook and whatever and social media about competitions, uh, bikini competitions, physique competitions, figure competitions, um, any of those competitions where you diet really hard, you get on stage um, and you showcase your body, your hard work. And you guys know, if you have been following the channel a lot, I've competed in two shows. I've done several topics, several videos about this topic. So if you want to hear more about my thoughts and opinions on competing, go to my channel. You're obviously on my channel, but go back to my channel, main channel, and search um, prep and competitions um, and reverse dieting and things of that sort. I talk about it a lot on this channel. But I did have a question on... Snapchat about competitions. I'm just going to read it to you guys from Daisy. Um, I've seen some of your videos on the topic, but the reason I'm asking is because I'm actually thinking about competing. For beginners, what would you suggest? What to take into consideration? How much time it would take? How you have to prepare the different stages of going into competition? What to do? What not to do? Basically, the ins and outs of competing of prep and things of that sort. So real quick, Daisy, um, I want you to go and look at my, it's a lot of videos, but I did a full series leading up to my last show in 2015. So I would highly recommend that you go watch a lot of those videos. You can scroll through. Um, if you just look up, uh, I think journey to the stage is what I called it. Um, you can browse all of the different videos that I have. I talk about my macros, my cardio, um, the approach that my coach and I took towards the show, um, reverse dieting out of the show, the plan for after the show, struggles, mental struggles, uh, food struggles. I talk about everything um, during that series and I'm so glad I did because it's nice for me to look back but it's also nice for me to let you guys know that it's there. So I encourage you to go look at a bunch of those. But I'm going to touch on a few of these topics that you asked about. Um, the first one being, what do you suggest for beginners? First thing I suggest for beginners is, are you sure that you want to compete? I know it's awesome to have that goal. I know it's great to want to look your fittest and, and have a really, really dedicated goal. Um, that extra drive, that motivation to do something you've never done before. Can you do that without competing? That's my first question to you as a for sure beginner. A lot of the time, if you are a beginner, you don't need to compete. A lot of what you need to do is find a workout and diet plan that you can stick to long term. You don't have to compete to find these things. So find some sort of smaller goal to work towards. Maybe in the next six months, you want to be able to lift a certain amount, squat a certain amount, bench a certain amount. Um, maybe you want to fit into a certain pair of um, jeans or a certain dress or a certain suit. I don't know, whatever it is. Find that and aim for that the next six months. After that, see where you're at mentally and physically and reassess. But what I encourage to you guys, especially as beginners, do not jump straight into a show thinking that that's the next thing. It is not the next thing. You Sometimes it doesn't even have to be a thing for you. Not everybody needs to compete. In, in fact, a very small percentage of people in the fitness and health industry should compete. Um, I'm appreciative that I did because I went through it and I can share these things with you guys and give you my thoughts and opinion. Um, but if I could do everything that I did without competing, I mean, why not, right? <laughs> why not have um, the health and fitness without even having to waste <laughs> the money on it? Um, so that's the first thing. Do you even need to? Should you even compete? Um what to take into consideration. Take into consideration that this is going to take every bit of effort, every bit of mentality. Your relationships will be affected. Um, your schedule will be affected. Sleep, finances, 
mindset, everything, your health, everything is going to be affected by this prep. So take that into consideration and take it seriously. Some people, very small percentage of people can compete without it affecting much of their lifestyle or without it affecting much of their schedule. Um, if you have a full-time job, if you have, if you're in a relationship, if you like to see your friends often, if you do a lot of social things, if you have kids, everything is going to be affected because it's going to take everything within you to get your workouts done. Depending on your approach, you might be spending a lot more time in the gym. You're going to be spending a lot more time planning your food, prepping your food, um, tracking your food, whatever your nutritional approach. It's going to take time. Um, take that into consideration. Finances. It's going to cost a lot of money. Suit. Uh, show entry. Food. Gym membership. Tan. Makeup. Hair. More tan. Pictures. It's going to take a lot of money. Um, I have a video talking about why I plan on not competing again. I'm going to link that below. Go watch that one for sure. How much time would it take? This just depends. It really depends. If you do actually consider competing, find a good coach. Um, find a prep coach that specializes in flexible dieting. And I'm not kidding you. Find a coach that's going to help you prep in the best way for you. Not somebody that sends out cookie cutter meal plans, cookie cutter workouts. Find somebody that will adapt the approach according to your lifestyle, your goals, your mental and your health background. Um, highly, highly recommend my coach, William Grazione. I'll link his uh, website below. Um, best approach for a prep that I've, of course I only did two shows, but best approach that I had, um, that I experienced. And then from what I've heard from people, um, he's one of the best prep coaches I can ever recommend for you guys. Um, but how long would it take? It just depends. I would usually recommend at least 16 weeks, possibly 20, but that's a long time dieting. You have to think about this is going to be 16 to 20 weeks, probably spent in a caloric deficit working your ass off, mentally challenging yourself. So consider that. Um, let's see different stages of going into competition. Um, I'm not quite sure what that exactly wants to be asking. Um, not quite sure about that question. What to do, what not to do. There's no one way to prep. There's no one way to tell you what to do and what not to do. Um, it's going to look different for everybody depending on the approach that you and your coach take. So again, get in contact with a good coach. If anything, find several coaches and, uh, go back and forth asking them questions of how they prep people. Um, they'll, they'll ask for your pictures. They're going to want to see where you're at now and how far you have to go. And if it's even a good, um, option for you at this time to compete. So I, I can't tell you one thing what to do, what not to do. Um, one thing I do highly recommend, like I said, is to find a coach that, that does uh, flexible dieting and a flexible nutritional approach. Because if you spend 16 to 20 weeks doing something that is severely restrictive, like a lot of people on prep do, they adhere to this diet for, you know, that has a list of five things that they can eat and they can't eat anything else or anything that they previously enjoyed. What you're going to do post-show is you are going to rebound hard. You are going to binge out for days um, and your body's going to put back on a lot of fat really, really, really quickly. So I highly encourage you to find a coach that um, emphasizes flexible dieting. And this is not something I know a lot of people think of IFYM and flexible dieting as a chance to eat pop tarts and ice cream all day. That's not what it's about. You guys, that's, it's just about being able to choose what you eat. It's being able to choose the proteins, the carbs, the fats that you eat every day, just adhering to those goals that your coach sets for you. Say, so they know where your body needs to be at the time and you choose 
what fits into that day. If you want to make a meal plan for yourself, that's great. Do it. If you want to make a meal plan and eat the same thing every day, that's fine. But you're allowed that flexibility if you don't want to eat uh, brown rice for your carbs. You can have some freaking potatoes. You can have pasta. Hell, you can have a bowl of ice cream if it fits into your intake and you still feel good at the end of the day. Um, it's not about being crazy restricted. So that's what I encourage you to do. And then I encourage you at the same time to not be severely restricted. But prep in all ways is going to be restrictive because you're going to have to be in a deficit. You're going to have to sacrifice your time for your workouts and for planning your food and prepping your food. Um, you're going to have to say no to uh, some social situations if you know, if you need to get a workout done or um, if you need to get your sleep in or something of that sort. So just be prepared for that. Be prepared and look up videos on the dangers of competing. Look up videos of people that had bad experiences competing because for every good experience that you see on social media, there are going to be 10 to 15 bad experiences. So it's important to learn all of the aspects and all of the possibilities and know that there's good and there's benefits to it, but then also know and understand all of the downfalls and all of the bad sides, including um, health risks and hormone imbalances and um, extreme fatigue and um, mind games you play with yourself and the post-show um, struggles post-show being the big one. So make sure that whenever you do, if you do decide to compete, if you find a coach, talk to them about the post-show plan before you even start your prep. Know that they have a goal and a plan for you to diet out of your prep diet. So that's one of the more important things because post-show I think is the biggest struggle. It's easy getting to the show because you have that goal, because you have that um, tunnel vision, you're set on getting to the show day. But once the show is over and the goal is gone, make sure that you have some smaller goals to hit um, after the show so you don't feel lost and you don't just go off the deep end. <laughs> Daisy. I hope this helped answered some of the questions about competing. Um, I'm always happy to talk about this topic. But like I said, I do have a lot of videos about it. So hopefully you can look at more of those. Some of them are linked below. And I hope you guys are having a good day. Hope y'all are enjoying Vlogmas. I sure am. I like all of these topics. And my new camera is awesome. But I keep seeing my hair is looking kind of jacked up right now. So I'm going to go work out now. I've got my upper body day today. And I hope y'all have a great day. As always, if you enjoyed this video, cheers, and I will see y'all tomorrow.